Hello everyone, this is Mr. Lipchick, and our topic for discussion today is going to be one that is central to economics, and that is the concept of demand. So what is demand? <clears throat> demand is the desire to own something and the ability to pay for it. I can't stress the last part enough. Uh, if you really want to understand what it is, uh, it is the ability to pay and the desire. Uh, because without the ability to pay, um, there is no call for whatever product, uh, you know, uh, is in the market that you would uh, associate with demand. So, if you want or need something, okay, if you do not have the ability to pay for it, you have no demand for it. And economists often predict demand by measuring consumer disposable or extra income. Now, you know, this whole idea can be a little confusing to people, okay, because we're used to using the word demand in a very broad sense. But try to remember for economics that you must have the ability to pay. And this usually comes from the form of disposable income, uh, which is money that you have above and beyond your basic needs, such as food, rent, and things of that nature. Uh, demand is what drives economic activity. When there is low demand, producers cannot sell a good or service to consumers. If producers cannot sell their goods, they must lay off workers and demand drops even further. Sometimes they call this a recession, or if it's really bad, a depression. And this brings us to the law of demand. The law of demand states that consumers buy more of a good when its price decreases and less of a good when its price increases. And <clears throat> this may seem a little simplistic, but you will see that it plays into all of our other economic theories that we're going to talk about. The law of demand results from two behavioral patterns that human beings have, known as the substitution effect and the income effect. First we'll talk about the income effect. The income effect refers to a change in consumption resulting from a change in real income. Now what is real income? Real income is uh, the income, <clears throat> what your income can actually buy. It's your buying power as opposed to you know the number of dollars you have. When prices for a good rise, your real income is lowered, and it feels like you have less money. You then consume less of that particular good. When prices for a good are lowered, you feel like you you feel you have more real income, and you feel healthier, wealthier. Excuse me. Um, so uh, <clears throat> the opposite happens and you then consume more of the particular good. Okay, So it's a psychological effect. Prices are high, you feel like you have less money. Prices are low, you feel like you have more money. And your spending behavior changes as a result. Okay, very important concept that will influence demand is the substitution effect. The substitution effect is when consumers react to an increase in the price of a good by consuming less of that good and more of other goods. Consumers will buy cheaper, will substitute cheaper alternative goods for a good when its price increases. If the price drops, consumers will purchase more of a good and fewer of the alternatives. Butter and margarine would be a good example. If the price of one became too expensive. Uh, the other is very similar, um, and if it was cheap enough, people would switch to that. Okay, demand can actually be put on a schedule and measured, and economists do this. Of course, they you know these uh, measurements are estimates, and there are a lot of things that factor into it, but it can nevertheless be done. A demand schedule is a table listing the quantity of a good that a person will buy at each different price. Market demand schedule lists the quantity of a good that all consumers will buy 
at each price. <clears throat> and as you can see, in regards to millions of computers demanded, uh, if there are a million, if the price of a computer is $800 per computer, the demand will be at a million, and if the price is $1,100, it'll drop to 700000 because of the income effect and people's ability to pay. Uh, so this is a good example of a market demand schedule. <clears throat> you can create individual schedules as well. Uh, the schedule can be graphed and created into a demand curve. <clears throat> demand curve is a graphic representation of a demand schedule made by plotting price against the number demanded on a line graph. Demand curves slope down and to the right, reflecting decreasing willingness of consumers to purchase an item with increasing costs. So remember, your demand curves are always going to slope down and to the right. That is how you will identify them when you do these economic problems. Demand curves are only accurate for one specific set of market conditions. They don't apply universally to all conditions. If market conditions change, the entire demand curve may change by shifting to the left or to the right. Here's a sample of the demand curve. Demand curve for the price of cakes. So you will see at $9, uh, there will be demand for one cake because of this high price. Uh, the more reasonable price at $5, five cakes will be demanded. And at $2, eight will be demanded. Okay, and at no dollars, 10 will be demanded because everyone's going to want a cake if it's free. So, the quantity of cakes demanded increases as the price drops. So, to review, demand is the desire to own a good and the ability to pay for it. The law of demand states that consumers uh, will buy more of a good when the price decreases and less when the price increases. The income effect is a change in consumption resulting from changes in real income. And the substitution effect is when consumers buy less of a good when its price increases and more of a cheaper substitute. And demand for an item can be measured by a demand schedule and the corresponding demand curve. That concludes our discussion. Thank you for viewing, and I look forward to seeing you in the live lesson. Have a great day.